tutorial, we're going to make the changes needed in our app to make its data load from a Firebase database instead of being hard-coded inside the app. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to our Firebase database and we are going to go to the rules section and we are going to turn off the authentication for this app by hard-coding the read and write permissions to be true all the time. When I do this, uh, I may get a warning here saying that I've made the database generally readable and writable to the public, but if you've done it multiple times, you won't get that uh, warning message. In some future enhancement for this app, we will turn the authentication back on. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our app and we're going to take out the code that is in there uh, currently to uh, hard code the data inside the app and we're going to start by commenting out all of that code and what we're going to do now is we're going to load this information from Firebase instead because we're not going to code the images for this app until much later I've gone ahead now and turned off the piece of code that gets the picture ID in this app and displays the picture. We'll take care of this at another time. Another thing I want to point out is this extremely important constructor that I've put in here, even though there's no code for it. When we take the data in Firebase and turn it into a serial stream and a deserial stream, in other words, putting it back together as an object, the Firebase deserializer requires that there be a constructor here for the class that's going to contain our data and that the empty constructor be provided. As a reminder for most of our apps, including this one, after the onCreate method is called, we've created this separate initialize method that has all of our custom code for our app. We need to take care of a little bit of Firebase overhead and this uh, initialize method would be a great place to do that. So we need to set the context for Firebase. So what we're going to do is we're going to just say Firebase set Android context and we're going to just pass in the, this pointer. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a Firebase variable to get access to Firebase. I'll just put that here at the beginning. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to initialize this reference in our initialization. And here it's expecting a link to our Firebase uh, database. So if we go back to Firebase for a second, uh, this is the link that it wants right here. So I'm just going to copy this link. And I'm going to paste it right in here. And that is all we need to do to get a link to our Firebase. So when the app first starts up and this initialization method is called, we now want to load the data from Firebase. And that's the next thing we're going to take care of. OK, so I've created an event listener on the Firebase. And the two required methods there are the on data change and on canceled. We're not going to use the on canceled method. The on data change method we're going to use, uh, as the name implies, it's called every time data changes in the Firebase. But for our application, uh, what's important is that this method is also called once at the beginning when the app first loads up. And that's really the only time we're going to be calling it because we're not going to be changing the database in, in, while the app is running. So I'll put a comment in here saying that uh, we're not going to use this in our app but it is still a required method and here is where we're going to put in the code to load the data from Firebase when the app first starts up. Going back to our Firebase uh, node here we see that the tab is called questions so since we want to access this data here we're going to need to modify our uh, link to include the questions uh, as part of the link so that will basically bring us to here. Now let's look at the code that we've added to the onDataChange method. 
First, I've allocated some memory for our questions array list. And here we see the th two lines of code that are the densest lines in our app. They're kind of hard to understand, so I'm going to take a few minutes now and explain this. The data snapshot data type is basically a gross view of the database at any time. And what happens when the data changes in Firebase, a snapshot is taken of that data. So if we go back now and look at the database, we see that when we load up the app, this is going to be the snapshot that's provided. Now keep in mind that at this time, the, uh, the code is not aware that we are going to take this data and cast it into a question structure. All it knows is that it has uh, three nodes, and each node has this structure here. So let's go back to the code now. And uh, what's happening over here is that the snapshot, when I do this get children function, what this does is it returns an iterable list, an iterable list. And uh, the, th that list uh, consists of this item, this item, and this item. So there are going to be three items on that list. The first time, the iterator is going to point to this block. The second time it's going to point to this block, and the third time it's going to point to index number two block. Okay, so that's what's happening here in this for each loop. And this Q is taking turns being the zero index, the first index, and the second index. Not just the number of the index, but the actual data itself that is sitting here, here, or here. Okay, so now what's happening is that this code here, even though it doesn't look like it, is a fancy cast operator. Now normally when we cast, we would put the cast on the uh, of the class that's it being cast to on the outside, and we would put the, uh, the, the value that's being cast on the inside like this, but this particular get value method has a, a cast parameter that it takes, which is this question class here. And so what, what's happening right here is actually that this value is being cast as if it was like this. Okay, So that's basically what's happening there. And once we cast it to a question structure, just as a reminder, that looks like this. Once we cast it to that structure, we add it to our uh, array list of questions which we're then going to display to the user one at a time. One last thing I want to show here is that these two items which were previously outside this method have been brought into this method and this is important because once we're in the data change method only then after we've loaded up all the data can we show the first question to the user. That's why this is the perfect place to di display the first question. Here we are running the app now, and everything seems to be working. Notice that the pictures are not showing up because we've turned off that feature. But if we continue to try and work the app, it continues to register just fine and only advances when the proper answer is given. Mm -hmm.